Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and today, what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We, you and I, are going to describe the relationships between KA, KB, and KW. Okay, so let's take a quick moment and break it down. Basically, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the equation KW equals KA times KB. And we're gonna solve for any of the variables. We're gonna bust out some amazing math skills. Algebra, yes. Okay, so first, it's important to recognize that the equilibrium constant K can have several subscripts to provide more information about the particular equilibrium situation being expressed. So it's important to recall that in general, we describe an equilibrium constant as a ratio of the product concentrations to the reactant concentrations. And simply note that adding a little subscript to K gives us a little more information about the specific type of equilibrium reaction we're talking about. So for example, you're gonna see Ka and it's simply defined as the acid dissociation constant. And it's a measure of an acid's relative strength. So when we talk about the equilibrium constant generally, using this general reaction here, we end up with an equilibrium constant that looks like this. Again, a ratio of products to reactants. But when we look at placing an acid in water specifically to set up an equilibrium reaction, we can describe the equilibrium constant as Ka, or specifically the acid dissociation constant, or the acid dissociation constant is just the specific type of equilibrium constant that we're talking about in this situation. Recognize that still product concentrations over reactant concentrations. This little a is just cluing us into the fact that we're talking about an acid dissociation equilibria. We also have Kb. This is the base dissociation constant and is a measure of a base's relative strength. So again, go back to our original generalized reaction and our original generalized equilibrium constant K. Just a ratio product concentrations to reacting concentrations. But when we're talking about placing a base in water that sets up an equilibrium reaction, we can write the base dissociation constant which is just a specific type of equilibrium constant. And this little b is just telling us that we're talking about an equilibrium situation in which we placed a base in water. Again, notice it's a ratio of product concentrations to reacting concentrations. Of course, keep in mind that we've left out the water because that's a pure liquid, which isn't included in our equilibrium constant expression. And the third one that I wanna to talk to you about is Kw. It's defined as the dissociation constant of water. And again, as we think about how we generally describe an equilibrium constant, concentration of products to concentration of reactants. But for the dissociation constant of water, this is our equilibrium expression. And so as we define the equilibrium constant for water or Kw, again, it's just cluing us into this specific type of equilibrium reaction. Again, keep in mind with Kw, we're only gonna have the products expressed in our equilibrium constant because those are the only things that are aqueous and can have concentrations. Our reactants are pure liquids and will not be included in the equilibrium constant expression. Now, keep in mind that there are a lot of other equilibrium constants that you'll see. Ksp, Kc, Kp, but for our unit on acids and bases, we're gonna focus primarily on Ka, Kb, and Kw. Okay, now there's an important relationship that exists between Ka, Kb, and Kw. To start, I want you to think about a general base, B. When it's placed in water, it sets up this general equilibrium equation. Again, I recognize this as a base because it's a proton acceptor forming the HB plus conjugate acid. As I write my base dissociation constant, it's gonna be equal to the concentration of my products over the concentration of my reactants. Again, keep in mind, I don't include pure liquids in my equilibrium constant expressions. Now, I want you to keep in mind that that conjugate acid that formed is also swimming around in a bucket full of water. And so it sets its own equilibrium equation up with water. And I can write the equilibrium constant for this acid as a ratio of the product concentrations to the reacting concentrations. And then I want you to keep in mind that this bucket of water, that this base that we originally placed in water and the conjugate acid that form is now in, can have its own equilibrium constant expression that relates the concentrations of hydronium ion and hydroxide ion and once again is related as the concentration of the products over the concentrations of the reactants. And let's keep in mind that at 25 degrees Celsius, Kw is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. So how can we relate Kb 
ka and kw to one another. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to solve the kw equation for hydroxide ion concentration. And so hydroxide ion concentration is equal to kw over hydronium ion concentration. Notice that back in my base dissociation constant, I have a place for hydroxide ion concentration. And according to my expression for kw, hydroxide ion concentration is equal to kw over hydronium ion concentration. So if I sub that relationship into my expression for kb, kb is equal to the concentration of that conjugate acid, Hb plus, times kw over my original base concentration times hydronium ion concentration. Again, I just took this and plugged it into my equation because this is equal to hydroxide ion concentration. Now I want you to notice that my expression for Ka that we see right here is in my expression for Kb now. It's just inverted. So notice that one over Ka is equal to the concentration of my conjugate acid over the concentration of the hydronium ion times the concentration of my original base. This is this, and this is equal to one over Ka. So let me sub in again. Kb is now equal to Kw over Ka. Or more commonly, as you'll see it on your formula chart, Kw is equal to Ka times Kb. And at 25 degrees Celsius, that means 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 is equal to Ka times Kb. Or if we take the negative log of each side, which throws in some fancy log rules, we get 14 is equal to pKa pKb. Now, if all the math and substitution that went into coming up with these equations is confusing you, I just want you to focus on and recognize that this equation here and this equation here are important relationships between Ka, Kb, and Kw. And if you hate this class and you cannot wait to get out of it and you don't really care about why, recognize that you'll get these two equations on the formula chart and you can use some basic algebra to manipulate and solve for different variables in the formulas. Okay, and that does it for this video. Have a fantastic day.